Good morning, everybody. What a beautiful day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And thank you all so much for coming out for this wonderful Mother's Day service um, where our sweet little young cherubs of the church and youth get to um, do the service for you guys. And we just pray that we all know that all the glory goes to God. And we just pray that God shines through each and every one of us. Some pastoral updates. Um, Lee had gotten a text this morning from Ron Seacrest. Um, they used to be members. They just recently moved out to be with their kids. And Judy had fell, fall, fallen um, this week, Saturday. And she, has, she hit her head, and she is in the hospital. There was more to the text, but I don't remember. That's why they don't ask me to assist. But um, please keep her in your prayers. I know it's not, it's not very good, so please keep her um, in your prayers and Ron Seacrest. Also, um, we want to do a congratulations to Phil and Becky Perkinson. They just had um, a grandchild born, Bob Carter. So um, we just pray for the precious little life in there. Um, I think, oh, we have a vacation Bible school meeting. If anyone is interested in helping with vacation Bible school, we need some volunteers. It's going to be June 17th through the 21st. It's 9 a.m. to 12 a.m. during the day. We partner up with the Methodist Church across the street. Um, so if you're interested in that, please contact me or come over to the Methodist Church this Thursday at 6.30 um, for the meeting. Thank you. Let us worship God together in the invitation to worship.
This is the day God has made for our living and being. For the church and God's people, for his truth, hope, and challenge. For the call to be servants, God's witnesses serving. For God's ministers among us who care for and nurture. For the joy and excitement that God is among us. Praise God, Father, Son, and His Spirit most holy. This is the day to sing praises to God, to give thanks for His goodness and mercy. Let us ask ourselves, are we ready to worship? Are our hearts prepared? We learn from God's word that as people of God, we can be assured of his great love for us, for his continued grace each and every day, and for his forgiveness of our sins. In the strong name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. Let us ask ourselves, are we ready to worship? Are our hearts prepared?
Good morning. Now, I want you to just think about some things that might have happened to you. Someone has just taken your favorite toy from you. You have had one piece of cake and your stomach feels full. Someone offers you another piece. You are alone in the kitchen and you see an open bag of chocolate chip cookies on the counter where you can reach it. No one will notice if you take a few. Someone has just called you a mean name that hurt your feelings. They, now they are laughing at you. You just received some discipline from one of your parents. Now your brother or sister is smiling. Now, I have a few questions. I, I have a question to think about, for you to think about how you would act. Would you need to use self-control in this situation? I have an answer for you, and it's in the Bible. Titus chapter 3, verses 1 and 2 tell us, Remind them to be subject to rulers and authorities, to be obedient, to be ready for every good work, to speak evil of no one, to avoid quarreling, to be gentle, and show every, every courtesy to everyone. Now that might be what the Bible says, but so have our mothers. Today is Mother's Day. She would want us to be obedient, ready to do good, to speak badly of no one, to be peaceable and considerate, and to have a humble attitude. We should do whatever is good so there will be fewer outbursts of anger and less whining and bickering, especially with our brother and sister. Let's pray, and if you would repeat after me. Thank you, Lord, for bringing us to church today. Thank you for the lessons on controlling our anger. Our temptation, our temptation and our words. And our words. Thank, you for our mothers, Thank you for our mothers who remind us of those same verses. In your name we pray. Name we pray. Amen.
1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12. Don't let anyone make fun of you just because you are young. Just because you set an example for others' followers by what you say and do, as well as by your love, faith, and purity. This is the word of the Lord. Jeremiah chapter 1, verses 4 through 9. The word, of the, Lord, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. At last, sovereign Lord, I said, I do not know how to speak. I am too young. But the Lord said to me, Do not say, I am too young. You must go to everyone I send you to, to say, and whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you and will rescue you, declares the Lord. Then the Lord reached out his hand and touched my mouth and said to me, I have put my words in your mouth. This is the word of the Lord. So when we were thinking about what we wanted to do for the message this year, in the past we've done skits or we've done some other things, and some of the kids said we would love to give our testimony. We would love to just tell everyone what the Lord has placed on our hearts. And I just think that is awesome and amazing because we all know how scary it is to get up here and talk and let alone talk about our journey. But to have um, two young adults, youth in our church that want to do that. Um, so I, my favorite part of this job is working with the youth and the children and to just see their faith and their walk with Christ just grow each and every day. Um, so the two ones that are doing it, Wheeler, I love Wheeler. Um, he's been active in youth and in the church for long, a long time, but for the past three years, love getting to work with him. And Liliana, you know, their family just moved here a couple years ago. So it has been just such a joy working with all of them. And just their hearts are so pure and genuine, and I just pray that they never change. Um, so if you would, let us pray, and then they will each come up and just lay, um, tell you guys what God has laid on their heart. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this beautiful, beautiful day, for the service where the children and youth just get to be vessels for you. Lord, it's all about you, and all the glory goes to you. Thank you for the parents that are so committed to their children, committed to their faith, their walk with you. Um, just be with Liliana be with Wheeler, be with the rest of the youth as we finish out this service. Um, let their nerves go away, let them be at peace, and just for them to know, Lord, that it's all about you and you will use them as it sees fit. It's in your name we pray, amen. Liliana. Since I've been raised as a Christian, I can't say there's an exact point where I didn't believe or didn't comprehend anything about church or God. But not knowing where to turn when things went wrong or when I needed advice I couldn't find, those are probably the things that non-Christians could relate to. Whenever something would happen or I felt alone and nothing physical could help me, I didn't know what to do. I felt lost. Since I've been raised as a Christian since a child, there was never really a point where I didn't believe. And when there was, I was too young to comprehend anything. My life basically re revolved around my parents and what little I learned from church and everything else a small child gained happiness and identity from. As I got older and understood more about the world, I got more complex with my emotions and thoughts. Sometimes I felt alone or that no one was there for me. I felt like everything that was negative would never go away. I had no one to turn to, and if I did, it didn't fix my problem completely. I was very young when I first heard the gospel, so of course I probably just listened to hear it and didn't really understand. It was just routine. I didn't actually fully understand it or anything. It was just going to church with the family, wearing a pretty dress, and listening to the long speech and going home. When I first moved here, I was at an age where I understood and knew more things. The church was very different from my old one, both with the people and style of teaching, so I got more connected and more open towards God with the learning of Him than I have ever been with my older churches. Because of what I've learned and how I've learned it, I've been shown different sides and ways of life I can't explain. I have a newfound faith, and I truly believe. 
I depend on him, live for him, love him, and pray to him. He's changed my life and still does to this day, and I see that. I believe that. Accepting God can be one of the hardest things in someone's life, or one of the easiest. I know for me it was one of the hardest things I will ever do. Being a Christian is hard. Believing in someone and something that you can't see, following certain rules, fighting temptations, and being as strong as you can. Being a Christian is more than just saying, I believe in God and going to church every Sunday. You really have to give your heart to him. And as a youth who, feel, who feels like so much has gone on in her life, and she's only lived for 15 years, I can definitely say that being a Christian is really important to me. Having someone like God always there for you is amazing. Knowing someone so powerful and so ever-loving is there for you, for your dark times, and when you're losing all hope in yourself and humanity, he's there, and he always will be. I'm still growing as a Christian and growing as a person. There are lots of things that I've tried changing as I've gotten older and as I've been dedicating dedicating my life to him. And there are lots of things that I've learned and still have yet to learn. One of the things I've been trying to do is not to hate, but to dislike. There are lots of things that I've learned about life itself. So many things that I couldn't even list them all. But I definitely will learn more than, I, than what I know now throughout my journey of living. I live for God. I live to worship him and follow in the Christian path. I also live for my family and friends and myself, and my happiness and my goals and what I want to do in the future. We only live one time on this earth, and then we go where we're meant to be. So I try to live my life as not only a Christian, and by doing what's right and what's good for me, and others, and what makes me happy. Knowing that God is always there for me calms me, enlightens me, and gives me joy and comfort and love all at once. Knowing that if anything happens, he's there. He's always there if you need him, and he's always there if you don't. It's the person's choice to believe or to call or not. Knowing that I can confess to him and ask him questions at any time, whether I ask him to help and give me strength or to others, and just pray for certain things, and to know that whether they happen the next day or later on, whenever it's meant to be, is amazing. Knowing that my call for help or just words of thanks were heard is one of the biggest things as a Christian. He hears you. God hears you, even when you don't think he's listening. Thank you. My name is Wheeler Johnson, and I'm in eighth grade, and I will be attending Washington High School this August. Faith, faith never changes. It is never, it never has, and it never will. Faith will always help people through hard times. My faith is very important to me because I am a rising freshman, and I have been told that in high school, faith is tested. My faith has never been tested as of right now but it has been strengthened by my parents and numerous camps I have been to. The camps I have been to are where and I and other young men go to explore our faith and ourselves. We use the outdoors, hunting and fishing to explore the gospel and beyond. At these camps, I have learned to always keep faith and to pray for everything. In high school, my faith will be tested, but, the, but with the Lord, I will persevere. I will lean on my faith when I will be confronted with just tough choices in my high school career. In these times, I will lean on the importance of prayer and staying with the Lord. I will lean on my faith after high school when I go to college and then start a career. Prayer should be used for all things, small and large. The Lord will deliver on all prayers in his own time. And as I go forward unto the gateway of adulthood, I must keep my faith and so should everybody entering this passage as well.
Let us now say together what we believe. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us bow our heads. Dear Lord, we've come to you today to give you thanks. We have so much in life to be thankful for. Today, we are especially thankful for our mothers. We are thankful for the grace and love that mothers show their children and others every single day. We pray for those that are missing their mothers today also. We all have many special women in our lives that we are thankful for. Mothers, grandmothers, aunts, sisters, teachers, and friends, some of whom we are blessed to still have in our lives and some who now live in our hearts. We also pray for our youth, for the church, and for all Christians everywhere. Gracious God, may your spirit give strength to all your people as they work and witness in your world. Unite us in your truth and love and help us to show your love to others. We pray all this in asking you to teach us how to pray the way you taught your disciples how to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now we have the opportunity to give back to God a portion of the blessings he gives to us.
Let us bow. <clears throat> let us bow our heads in prayer. Dear God, let us give you thanks for creating this amazing earth and for creating mankind so we can be here to worship on this wonderful Mother's Day. Thank you for the people who gave something to the church, whether it is money, projects, or just commitment. Thank you for, thank you for our wonderful church family here. Special thank you for Pastor Kenny for helping and taking head role of this ter of this church. The youth, the youth also particularly liked the Van Staldenens for their work with us middle and high schoolers. Thank you to our mothers for always being there, from when we got a small wound to graduating primary school, to when we get in trouble for not choosing the best option, to giving us a wonderful thing called love. Thank you for our families who love and support us for a big part of our duration during this life. And a big thanks to Jesus who gave up his life for us to live forever with him in heaven after our death. God bless everybody, amen. Insecurities will be erased by your love. 
be a living, personal presence in our lives, so we may reflect your image in all that we do. Amen.